What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. My name is Gabe and I am here to teach you how to make this amazing photo effect in Adobe Photoshop. Before we jump into the video though, I want to give a brief encouragement. I like to start all of my videos with an encouragement because you came here for graphic design, but we all really need some encouragement day to day. This may sound generic or a little simple, but I just wanna tell you that you, if you're watching this video, you're loved, you matter, you're valuable, and you have a significant thing to contribute to our world, to society, to others. Uh, and maybe you're like, I already know that. You don't need to tell me, thanks a lot. But maybe you don't know that, or maybe you need a reminder today. And if that's you, I just wanna remind you, you do matter and you have something important to do with your life. Your life matters. And I believe that, and I don't even know you. So hope that's encouraging to you. Again, maybe unexpected, but that's something that's really important to me and I wanna include in all my videos. So without further ado, let's take a look at Adobe Photoshop and figure out how to create this awesome effect. So here's the image that I found from a website called Unsplash. Highly recommend Unsplash. They've got totally free um, photos that you can use that are not paid for, that are royalty free. So they're great to use for projects like this. Um, this is from someone named Zach Lesniewik. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name, but thank you for your photo. Uh, so I have this photo and I also found another one that I'm gonna pull in. Let's see if I can find the right one. Oh no, which one is it? Ah, oh, nope, wow. Sometimes my uh, my downloads do this thing to where they decide that they uh, they don't want to show you the previews. So I'm just guessing here. Here we go. Okay, we got it. All right, so we have this picture of an iPhone. Um, and what we're going to do, similar to uh, my friend had sent me this one that he uh, posts from Instagram. It's right here, whichever way I'm pointing. Um, of this person who'd done this post where they had uh, the camera and they had like a waterfall coming out of it. So we're gonna do something similar. Um, and I'm gonna get my, my camera lined up first. What I'll do is I'll press my number keys on Photoshop. So one through zero, that adjusts your opacity of your layer. So I'm gonna bring it down real low and just kind of get it sized up to how I like. Um, I don't want it too high in the frame. Like I want it kind of centered and then I make sure it's not too big but I wanna make sure the waterfall is gonna be able to escape from the iPhone. So I'm just gonna line up. Um, I think we're almost there. Yep, I think we're good. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, create a smart object from this. So I'll right click, create smart object. And now if I double click into this area that has my, my photo icon, now I'll have this object where I can edit it uh, freely in its own kind of isolated workspace. So what I'll do, I always just duplicate the layer in case I need to go back for any reason. And now I will click W, which is your magic wand tool. And up at the top, I can click select subject. It's a very, very helpful tool in Photoshop because I basically need to take the background away from this hand to make my effect work. So it's already gonna get us close. We're gonna click select and mask to refine this a little bit more. So you can see we're close here, you know, we've got some parts that need a little extra work and in this tool you can you can add to your selection, you can um, remove from your selection and kind of work your way back and forth until you get something that looks nice. I am going to skip over me doing all of this because um, it's just not gonna be very fun to watch. But basically I'm gonna clean up all these parts um, that maybe uh, Photoshop didn't recognize and get it looking just right. Okay, so now I have it looking pretty good. I'm gonna click OK. That's gonna lock in our selection here. And then I'm gonna use this button over here, um, which is our masking button. And that is gonna mask to where all I have is just my phone. So now the next thing I need to do, I'm gonna create a new layer and using the pen tool, I'm going to trace the outline of the phone screen. And then I'm gonna also be cutting that out as well. So again, I'm gonna skip through that part uh, and I'll speed it up or something. And then I'll come right back. Okay, so now I've created the shape. And so what I'm gonna do is if I command click right here on this area, 
I can hide it if I want, but that's gonna select the area that I just created with that shape layer. And then I'm gonna click on my mask portion of this layer. If I click option and click it again, this is gonna show what my mask is doing. So the way a mask works in Photoshop is anything that's white is going to be visible and anything that's black is going to be hidden. And so what I need to do is I need to fill in this area here with black so that it hides the phone screen. So what I can do is I can go to edit and I'm gonna to go to fill and then I'll choose my background. If you look over here, my black is my background color. Click OK. And now I can deselect with Command D and then click out and that'll show me my iPhone. So this looks really good. I'm gonna save this smart object and then I'll close it. And when I open back up to my uh, file, now I have my phone and it's all completely knocked out just like I want. Okay, so a few more steps and then we're done. I'll make a few copies of this background layer here. Uh, I'll make one of those a smart object, and then I'm gonna use another one. So this one, how shall I say? Okay, so here's what we'll do. Uh, I'm gonna focus in on this layer for a moment, and I'll hide the rest so you can see what I'm doing. So using the wand tool W, I'm gonna click in the center here, and that's going to select all this empty space where my phone screen would be. Now turning back on my other layers, what I'll do for this layer that's on the top is I'm gonna use a mask, as well and so basically what's happening here is what's just inside the phone screen has been masked out of the image and next thing i'm going to do with my smart object one right here is i'm also going to add a subtle great or a gaussian blur which is just going to blur the background just a little bit uh, maybe five pixels tops i don't want to go too much but enough to where i have a little contrast between my hand and the phone and then the background so now the last thing that I'm gonna do, uh, and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, I'm actually gonna make a duplicate of this layer again. Okay. And don't worry about why, essentially it's because we're gonna be uh, working with this mask and I wanna make sure that the correct mask that has the phone um, screen is not gonna get messed up. So that's why we're making a second one. So now basically what I wanna do is using my mask, remember anything that's white is gonna be visible. So if I use my brush tool, which is B, and I start to draw with white, and then I click back in here, you're gonna see that my waterfall is starting to appear, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna kinda of go along the edges. Uh, I'm using a brush up here, it's the regular brush, but it's got, uh, the hardness is turned down a little bit, which means it's got some soft edges. And I can kind of tweak back between my black and my white if I need to add or remove things. The X button is gonna toggle between your background and foreground colors. So I can kind of take a little away. Um, I can add a little back in. Okay, and that looks really good. I was gonna go through a whole nother thing about how to really refine these edges because if you look in our example, um, whoever did that, that one had gotten the edges to where they looked very like wispy like they they were the the waterfall kind of fading and the vapor but honestly i think ours looks okay with how we've done it um and so i'm not really worried about trying to add in the rest something i could do if i wanted is i could actually um make all of this bottom area like if i wanted to make that a little more sharp i could by revealing this area of the mask uh i I don't know, I kind of like it, but I'm not sure if that's really what I want to do. You can let me know in the comments, have I made a grave mistake by doing this or not doing it or whatever. But anyway, so I think I like that. We'll stick with that. So, okay, so now I have my illustration. It looks really good overall. Um, the last thing that I want to do, and this is pretty important, is I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put it into a group. So new layer is shift command N, a group is command G. Uh, and then within this layer, I'm going to add some adjustment layers, things like levels. Um, you can also use curves. It's kind of the same thing. And what I can do here is I'm just going to adjust my levels just a bit. And this is adjusting the light and dark values within my image. And the reason I'm doing this, um, I'm going to also try, let's do color balance. And here I can just lightly adjust the balance of colors in my photos. Um, I can work from, let's see, so I can do mid-tones, shadows. I'm just gonna tweak these and it doesn't really matter so much how I'm doing these. It's just giving my photo like kind of a more edited look. There are other ways to do this as well, but I'll show you why I'm doing it in just a moment. Okay, so the reason I did that is because now if I go back, 
these are two different photos, right? The photo of the hand and the photo of the waterfall. And they're from very different backgrounds and lightings. One is in the fall, it's got all these browns and leaves, and the other one is a lot more uh, lush and green. And so when I added uh, this, these layer effects, what it does is it kind of unifies everything because um, it adjusts the colors of it as a whole, because that group is on top up here with our adjustments. And so that's just a good way to make sure that there's some consistency in your image and it feels um, the illusion uh, works and it feels like it, uh, it looks like it should. So that's how we do this. It's really not too hard. I hope that you learned something in this video um, and I hope that you are following along or try it. I'll link um, the photos that I used from Unsplash in the description if you wanna follow along. Uh, but if that's if that's all I've got, or I guess that is all I've got, uh, thanks for watching the video. Feel free to comment and like if you enjoyed it, just so I know that you enjoyed it. That'd be helpful for me. Um, and then if you have any ideas for videos, I'd love to make them. Like I said, my friend sent me this and was like, how do I make it? And I made a video. So comment something below if there's something you're curious to learn in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, After Effects, and I'll see if I can make a video for you. So I think that's it, but I hope you have a great day. And remember that you matter and you're important and you're loved. Thank you.